Welcome to the Relationship and Wellness Podcast with Nicola Beer. Nicola runs transformational breakthrough programs for individuals and couples and has several award-winning audio programs. She also runs a holistic life therapist certification program where you can get paid to guide clients to profound change and work from the comfort of your own home. For details, visit www.nicolabeer.com today. Please note, places are limited and are available on first-come, first-served basis. Hi and welcome, this is Nicola Beer and I'm going to be talking today about inferiority and superiority complexes. What that means and where it comes from. So we all go through moments in life where we feel good about ourselves, feel proud of what we've achieved, and similarly, moments where we feel down, doubt our abilities and lack self-confidence. However, our reaction to both of these situations can tell us so much about ourselves. Some people go through difficulty or something that makes them feel bad about themselves and will do something to motivate themselves, to change how they feel whereas others struggle to get out of that slump and place blame on themselves and others for why they feel this way. Psychoanalyst Alfred Alza researched why there are some people who feel low and insecure, yet they lack the motivation to change it, to change the way they feel, and they don't work towards their goals in their life. As a result of his research, Alfred introduced the term inferiority complex which, according to the American Psychological Association, is a basic feeling of inadequacy, of insecurity, deriving from actual or imagined physical or psychological deficiency. This means a person who has an inferiority complex will feel inadequate, insecure, because of either real or imagined flaws in themselves over a long period of time. Not only can this severely impact a person's enjoyment in life, it can also heavily affect relationships with others. On one side, you have the inferiority complex, and then on the other opposite side, you have the superiority complex. A person who is overly boastful, thinks highly of themselves, believe that they are above others in all situations of life, are those who psychoanalyst Alfred Alder, would class as having a superiority complex. Alder concluded that an inferiority complex was focused on weakness and hides real aspirations and capabilities. There are some common signs that you can look out for that indicate an inferiority complex, which I'll go through now with you. The first is constantly thinking about flaws and mistakes that you've made, going over, reliving the past mistakes, talking negatively to yourself, out of guilt, shame, embarrassment, self-disappointment, feeling unworthy or undeserving of good things, repeatedly comparing yourself to others, projecting your insecurities onto others, bringing others down, looking at their flaws, constantly seeking attention or reassurance, hating taking part in competitions and taking risks where you might be compared to others, fear of putting yourself out there, reacting aggressively when losing, wanting to quit and hide yourself away. These are some of the main indicators that you may have an inferiority complex. In comparison, a superiority complex has an over-exaggerated sense of self-worth and hides insecurities or feelings of being mediocre. The most common signs of a superiority complex include a very high opinion of themselves, always boasting about their accomplishments, believing they are smarter and better than others, not willing to listen to the views of others, have a strong need to control everything and make conversations all about themselves. If they're not the centre of attention, they get bored and want to leave. Constantly reacting in extreme ways, for example, full of anger, when others question or doubt their abilities, leaving jobs often for this reason, struggle to listen to criticism, even if it's from people from authority, a sense of entitlement, even if they haven't worked 
very hard or works with something. Although the signs of both inferiority complex and superiority complex are clearly different, the reasons why a person may exhibit these can be very similar. I'm going to share a few causes first which can lead to developing an inferiority complex. The first is a demeaning childhood. If a person grew up being told you're stupid, you can't do anything right, you're ugly, you're a disappointment, you embarrass me, these harsh comments can stay with them for a lifetime where they really believe it. They may not consciously think about their childhood or think about these times. However, their experiences will shape how they see themselves. And this leads to the guilt, shame and embarrassment over small things happening. It's easier to believe something you've been told at such a young, impressionable age. So they adopt that and see themselves as that. Rather than seeing yourself as an amazing, capable person, easily able to achieve what you set your mind to, these old, deep-rooted beliefs may come up. I can definitely relate to this, because until I had the personal breakthrough session that I now do for others, done on me over 15 years ago, my head was full of criticism and negative thoughts. I would attack myself on what I ate, what I said, what I drank, I would tell myself that people in the office didn't really like me, that I was weird, that I was different, that I didn't fit in. And for some strange reason, even though I was the highest performer in my whole office three years in a row, I still had a fear that one day I'm going to lose my job and they're going to say they no longer want me. And that was because of my childhood. Being told that I was ugly that I was stupid, that I was as thick as two short planks, being shouted at, I carried that with me and ended up shouting at myself. The next point is unrealistic societal expectations. Depending on where you live in your social network, your friend, family and work circles, you may feel inferior or inadequate if you believe that others are better. For example, in most major cities, It's the norm for people to have manicures, to dye their hair, to have dental veneers, the Hollywood smile, Botox, the plastic surgery, to look good and to fit in. I'm not judging that at all, just that there's a lot of pressure in certain cities that you always have to be looking perfect. In some places it can also be the norm that you have a boat. You have a high-paid job. You've got a certain level of education. You drive a certain type of car. You have a certain hobby. And those with an inferiority complex are going to be more susceptible to keeping up with the Joneses. They're going to be more stressed by it. They're going to be more comparing themselves, comparing how they fit in with those around them. And social media, of course, can add extra pressure for some people. It can bring on that sense of not having enough, not looking good enough, not being enough. And comparisons in any area can lead to unhappiness, drastic measures to try and fix yourself. And of course, the advertising industry doesn't help much either with the picture-perfect models and their material possessions, sharing that and trying to show that if you buy this, you're going to have a great life. If you buy this, you're going to feel happy. If you don't have this, you haven't been successful. And that's why in my individual breakthrough program that I do for others, I make sure that we get to the root of where these feelings of not being good enough come from. Where people decide, for example, that I don't look good enough, men or women will leave me, I need to please others, so I'm loved back, my self-esteem comes from pleasing other people, I'll never be happy with the way that I look. I'm boring. Of course, these are just different examples that people come with when they need to remove these. So a person can feel happy and free. And then there are physical or mental limitations. And what do I mean by that? Well, this is where someone believes that they're inadequate, has had experience where they've been misunderstood or embarrassed by challenges that they've gone through whether it's physical, 
mental, emotional. For example, someone that may have a stammer, maybe not good in a certain pronunciation of a language, and they've become conscious about it. Some people who are anxious in social situations have social anxiety. Then they convince themselves that there's something wrong with them. They're not able to socialize. They're boring. They're not interesting. They're whatever it is that they've decided. And this makes things really more challenging to overcome. So the inferiority complex can happen because of something that was a challenge in childhood and then becomes a permanent problem because it then isolates them and their confidence worsens. I had one lady who did the breakthrough program with me because she felt that people were not interested in her. She felt left out. And she felt left out going out with her sister and her best friends. If she missed something that they were saying, or if she felt that they were more interested in each other, she would feel awkward and walk away, which unfortunately ended up making everybody feel awkward. She was so sensitive around being left out. And that's because she was just in her own head, thinking that people don't like me, people are leaving me out. And of course, if you're thinking negative thoughts when you are out socialising, you're not going to be engaged talking to those people. So they're going to feel there's a distance. You're going to miss things that they have said. And it becomes that self-fulfilling prophecy. So we needed to make sure that she felt really strong and confident and good in herself, in all situations, especially socially. And then there's financial difficulties or financial comparisons. We all have different financial circumstances. Some people live comfortably, others are living paycheck to paycheck, and this can affect the way that people can feel within a social circle. If someone can't afford lavish nights out, like their friends, or struggle to buy designer clothes, and can't travel to exciting hotspots around the world, some people feel inferior to their friends, like they are lower class. When, of course, we all have different circumstances and no comparisons are ever going to benefit you when it comes to finances. We all value, manage and organise money in different ways. Some save, some spend, some are balanced. It's important to focus on managing your own money in a way that makes you and your partner happy. It's also very important to remember that money doesn't equal happiness. There is so much research to prove this. And sadly, we can all probably think of a few celebrities that were or are suicidal. I've had financial issues come up with couples when it comes to the inferiority and the superiority complex, where a husband or wife will share with me that they hate the fact that their partner shares what they're earning, tells people how well they're doing, how much money they've made, what car they drive, where they own properties, what yachts they own. And they're constantly sharing how much they're making. And this can be to their parents, work colleagues, friendship circles. And the other person can just feel so embarrassed. Why are you talking about what you're earning. And that's to hide flaws and weakness, which I'm going to talk to you about when we talked about the superiority complex. And similarly, it can also be linked to the inferiority complex, where some people will share, we don't have much money. We haven't made it in life. I haven't got a good enough education. I didn't make the money I wanted. And people end up talking about how they haven't succeeded financially. And this makes other people feel awkward. If you're beating yourself up in front of them about your financial position. And lastly, there are big life changes and emotional pain in adulthood. doesn't have to be childhood that can also cause inferiority complex. I had a lady that did my breakthrough recently with me. And she came to me because she needed to get rid of her negative, doubtful, critical thoughts. She had a loving, nurturing, positive childhood and secure attachments. Things changed for her when she went on maternity leave after giving birth to her beautiful baby girl. The first thing that knocked her confidence was discovering that her husband had gone out one night and slept with a prostitute when her daughter was eight months old. It created a huge distance between them 
and she felt unattractive and not good enough. Then, when she went to get back her old job, the company offered her a different job on a lower salary than her previous one, with no valid reason. She carried the resentment towards her husband and towards her work inside her, beating herself up, carrying it with her. She felt not good enough, and this led her to believe that she wasn't valued, she wasn't liked, she wasn't worthy of good things happening. She wasn't deserving of happiness. This negative thinking grew and grew, and her confidence continued to decline. Thankfully, she reached out for help. We cleared out these unhelpful beliefs. We got her to remember her strengths, her achievements, and thankfully, she applied for a new job and is now really, really happy in that new job. She's getting promoted. She's getting paid a much better salary than she has ever been paid before. And she knows her worth. She was also able to move past the cheating, forgive her husband, and see it as his weakness, not hers. And now she has saved enough money to pay for the deposit to get her dream home. So it's very important if you find yourself with inferiority thoughts that you work on changing them, however you want to change them. Now I'm going to talk about superiority complex. So I talked a little bit about the financial. Some people feel that they need to tell people about their financial successes because they don't want anybody to look at their flaws. If someone has tried something and failed, they may struggle to cope with this. And so they need to tell people what they're doing well at so they can hide things that they haven't done so well at, for example. And of course, it doesn't need to be finances. They could be bringing up anything. Another cause of superiority complex can also be a difficult childhood. If a child grows up without love, care and attention, they may start to learn to self-soothe or develop coping mechanisms where they make themselves feel better. For example telling themselves that they are worthy, that they deserve the best, that they're better than other people, to counteract the feelings of neglect or being unloved. And this can link to other childhood experiences. For example, where a child may have been made fun of or bullied, they learn to defend themselves by pushing their authority, by putting others down, and by highlighting other people's flaws, highlighting their own abilities above others. Sibling rivalry and a lack of parental approval is fairly common as well with people I've helped overcome superior complex, where a child has to constantly achieve to get a parent's attention, or they struggle to get their parent's attention because the other brother or sister is always the golden child, and they have to push and they have to share everything they've done well and constantly compete for attention, it then becomes their default way of communicating, their default way of introducing themselves, showing, I've done this, I've done that, I'm great at this, I'm good at this, this is what I've done. And they become very, very competitive. Adopting beliefs of influential people is also a very common trigger of superiority complex. We admire people And when we admire people, we adopt their beliefs. We want to be like them. We want to fit in with them. For example, let's say a significant family member, a successful member of the community, a teacher, believes that unless you're educated in an Ivy League school, you went to Oxford or Cambridge, you're not successful. Unless you get a first-class honours degree, it's not worth going to university. Unless you've made a million US dollars by the time you're 25, you're a nobody. Now, of course, I'm just making these up. However, if someone that you look up to has imposed these kind of beliefs that you're not superior unless you achieve this, and then you set out and you plan your life to achieve this, you may also adopt these beliefs that I am superior because I have achieved this. Like, I'm superior because I'm a doctor, or I'm this, or I'm that. And of course, some people you may recognise do this with their children. They're like, well, my child's done this. 
And my child's achieved that, whether it's in their education, their sports, and it becomes a competition and a superiority about what the children are achieving. Imagine a child growing up in that environment. They're likely to adopt that mindset too, that what you have, what you achieve, means you're better than other people. And another reason why people may develop the superiority complex is as a coping mechanism. For some people who struggle with anxiety or any other condition that makes them feel that they're different to others, that they don't fit in, that there's something wrong with them, they may then push their positives any chance they get so others see them as worthy. And this can help them to forget that they're struggling in other ways, if that makes sense. It reinforces that they are more than whatever issue that they have. Let's say it's anxiety. If they identify I'm an anxious person, which I don't believe, by the way, you can be doing anxiety. It doesn't mean you're going to be an anxious person for the rest of your life. And that's often a lot of what I do in the Breakthrough Programme to help people get rid of those identity beliefs. Because identity beliefs really affect our life. If you believe I am a depressed person, therefore you adopt, I'm always going to have to struggle with depression, which is not true. You don't have to live your life like that. Same with anxiety. So people to distract themselves because they've created an identity, I am this emotion, I am this thoughts, I am this, then to distract themselves, they start to share with people what they are good at. To make themselves feel better and to make sure that other people see them as better. So I hope you enjoyed me sharing about this very important topic. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about being in a relationship with someone who has an inferior or a superior complex. And more importantly, how you can support them, how you can grow together, and how you can create positive change. So if you're interested in this topic, do stay tuned for next week's episode. And I'd love to connect with you more personally. Please do join my Facebook group if you're on Facebook and if you'd like to. People share their questions, what's on their mind. They give advice and tools. People are going through very similar things. And it's very helpful for people to to share their experiences and hope with each other. And lastly, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that has recently left me a rating and review. I really appreciate it. It's helping the show to stay more visible, helping us to reach more people to get the support that they need. From my heart to yours, thank you for listening. Wishing you an awesome day ahead or evening ahead, wherever you are. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Relationship and Wellness Podcast with Nicola Beer. If you are interested in finding out more about becoming a holistic life therapist, would like to get Nicola's mentorship directly, or check out the award-winning audio programs, visit www.nicolabeer.com today. Subject to availability, a waitlist may apply.